Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 15 wins and three losses. He stands 176 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.1 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of Dagestan, Russia. Please welcome Camille Magomeda. And now, introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man the mixed martial artist for the professional record of 19 wins, three losses, and one no contest. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 70 kilograms. Representing Sport Club Elas and fighting out of Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. Put your hands together for the Brave Combat Federation Interim lightweight champion of the world, Abdi Salam Omok Ulu Kuba Nitsbag. For referee instructions, it's the bandit, Decky Larkin. Gentlemen, you've been over the rules. This is my instructions for me. Right? Did you stop? You stop right clean. Any questions from the challenger? Any questions? Any questions from the champion? Let's touch gloves. Let's do this. Big thanks to our sponsor, MTS, Brave Nation. Kamil Magomedov is in the black and red. Brave shorts, Abdi Salam, Omak, Ulu, Kubinich back in white and red. Two top tier talents in global mixed martial arts. This is a proper treat for the fans. So finally matched. Both incredible grapplers, Magomedov, more of a submission specialist, Kubanichbek, a fantastic wrestler. Kubanichbek known for putting a Khabib level pressure Ooh. on his opponent. Can be the wrestling, can be submission threats, can be kicks, can be punches. Kubanichbek is tearing up that leg. <laughs> Take time, Michael Medov. Good work to close the distance, but Kuba and Ichbek doing a great job. Oh, beautiful work from Camille Magomedov, triangling leg the legs. Yep. Those legs are shelved tight right now. Kuba and Ichbek can get up, but it's going to hurt his face to do it. <laughs> oh, needs to be wary of giving up the bike Back here. take. You don't want to do looking that. looking for a hook. Michael Medov does have four wins via rear naked choke. Oh, cheeky little fence grab. Michael Medov looking hard for a mat return. Deggy Larkin keeping a very close eye on proceedings. Kubinich Beck has his hips tight up against that fence so the second hook cannot get in there. He's now trying to roll the hand over. He's got the bony part of his hip underneath those two hands so there's a solid, and he was able to do it. He's able to break those hands. Once he's successful with that, he'll look for an underhook. Michael Medov lets go of the leg lace. Another little fin scrub from Kuban Ichbek. Eats a big knee for his trouble. Three times. Cage, cage grab from Kuban Ichbek. I think if he does it again, Deggy Larkin could take a point. A point in a three round fight, Brave Nation, is it a massive, massive deal. In a five round fight, it's a little bit less. Fighters need to listen to the referee when they're told no longer grab, no longer grab. Again, to a certain extent, it is just instinct when you're in there, when you feel like you're falling, to grab onto the closest structure to you, but you can't do it in MMA. Michael Medov putting heavy, heavy pressure. Almost scores a secondary take time. And here comes that quick reversal. Nice work from Kuban Ichbek. Now pressuring Magomedov up against the cage. Beautiful giraffe fight right here that Kuban Ichbek is coming out on top. He's using that head to push his opponent's head off the opponent's hips. Slowly trying to change levels, but nice work from Magomedov. Raising that level of Kuban Ichbek, making Kubanichbek the takedown harder. Looking for the back now. Fully traded positions now. Kuban Ichbek on the back of Camille Magomedov. Tables are turned. 
Oh, nice at back elbow from Magomedov. Did not land clean, and unfortunately for him, it allowed his opponent to secure an even better grip from back. Kubaninchbek now dragging his opponent down. Looks like it's sheer force, but it's a lot of leverage here. Kicking that base out, driving towards the hand, which is the weak link here. Oh, again, trying to get that tick down. Both of these fighters are so talented and so evenly matched. And again, Dickie Larkin calls for a break. That's, okay. That's essentially, in a situation like that, I often compare it to what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Kubanichbek, I hope we get to see him up against fen fence Ooh. again. Kubanichbek was using nasty little heel strikes to the inner calf to unbalance his opponent. Tried to wade in with the uppercut to close the distance, and again, presses Kubanichbek up against the cage. Final 30 seconds of the first round. Let's say both fighters, perhaps a little bit tentative in the first round, but it must be said this is the first of five rounds. Both fighters getting a little bit of a feel of each other, downloading data, so to speak. Magomedov trying to clamp down on that wizard, doing a good job not to be taken down. Big shots to finish from Kuban Hugely, East Bay. hugely, hugely smart for Abdi Salam. Kubanichbek to throw those shots at the last second. Yep. I do believe that those judges may not have known who won that round with that last little flurry. He may have taken it. Very evenly contested round. And as you say, Kerrick, very intelligent MMA IQ there from Abdi Salam Kubanichbek. Lands the big shots to finish the round. If there was a question mark about who won the round, Kubanichbek did something a little bit more forceful to, to perhaps give himself the edge. I think by the tiniest, tiniest fraction of a hair, Kubanichbek did win that one 10-9. Are we in agreement? I would say so, Kirik. But again, I expect it's almost like a, a Muay Thai fight. I expect to see the tempo gradually rise in this fight. Brave Nation, it's very hard to communicate what a five times five fight is like. Hold your hands up in front of your face. Try it for three minutes, it's exhausting. Try it for five minutes, it's worse. Have somebody punching you and kicking you as hard as they can while you're doing the same. That's one five minute round. These warriors are doing five times five. Abdi Salam Kubanichbek takes the center of the Brave Arena. And again, trying to punch his way into the pocket, secure the body lock and so far, Camille Magomedov has been showing great takedown defense. Excellent defense from Magomedov. Put that hip, Not chin into the hip, keep his opponent. Nice Not upright. Work. Nice work to get the separation there from Magomedov. And as sometimes happens when both fighters change levels at the same time. Kuban Hbeck is an absolute master of his craft. Such a spoiler, and I mean that with the greatest respect. He prevents his opponents from doing what they want to do, completely incapacitates them. He is a master of relentless attack. It can be stomping on your foot. Yep. It can be heel kicking the back of the calf, pushing with the head, looking for that back body lock, taking the back fully. If there's a separation, it's gonna punches and then boom, in on the hips. And Kirik, for, for people watching that, that may not be practitioners of any kind of martial art themselves, but are fans of the sport, can you describe just how tiring this type of a fight is on both fighters? I think luckily for both of them, Dickie Larkin separated them, but this is the greatest single test of strength in mixed martial arts. You put two people up against the cage, the stronger fighter is gonna end up pushing the other one. Magomedov doing the right thing by re-establishing himself in the center. Needs to get his back off the cage. Doing well to move laterally. Oh, Magomedov wasn't far away with a kick to the head. Landed more so on the body. A little bit higher. Would have been interesting. 
But you can see Magomedov does not want to be a static target for any length of time. Always moving. Big take down, but can Kubanich Beg keep him down? Kubanich Beg foregoing that shelving of the legs that uh, Dagestani fighters essentially invented in mixed martial arts. Trying instead to drag his opponent down, ride from the side, land some punches to the head. Magomedov doing a great job to get back to his feet, but the dangerous thing when you're fighting some of that Kubanich back, as soon as you get back to your feet, there's a very real possibility you could end up back down again. Brave Nation, no single thing Kubanich Beck does is completely devastating. It's the accumulation of them. Imagine you're outside, a single little hailstone falls on your head. It's not so bad. 5,000 of them fall on your head. It's so bad. What's going on right now is so bad. This kind of relentless attack is the very definition of misery. Kubanich Beck's getting ever closer. We, to, he hits the jab and then steps in with the uppercut. I think he's, he's identified that Magomedov is changing levels to try and negate and defend the takedown. Nice oh. side clinch, big knee right up the middle. Phenomenal little switch to Muay Thai. Oh. Beautiful timing by Kamil Magomedov. Times that jump knee, puts his opponent flat on his back. That is the issue with the, the more dynamic striking attempts in mixed martial arts. If it doesn't come off for you, usually you find yourself in the worst position. Got a hook in. Kubanich Beck is going to try and shake his opponent off. Slowly trying to work for the rear naked choke. He's gone palm to palm on it. He's underneath the chin, I think, Carrick. There's he some might danger go out. there. This is Brave deep. Nation, there is danger. There is danger. Kubanich Beck is hanging in, but for how long? He might go out here, Carrick. This squeeze is absolutely brutal. Kuba needs, but he's surviving. Oxygen, who needs it? Wow. That was tighter than a duck's backside. Full mount position. What a way to finish the round for Magomedov. Oh, big elbows. What a wild round, Brave Nation. Fights like that can be a little bit hard to score, but I'm going to call that one. 10-9 for Maga Madoff. Came very, very close with that choke and then finished it with a nasty elbow. See, there's the uppercut that Kubanichbek was trying to land. And Kirik, Kubanichbek has been in an incredibly deep choke. How could that potentially affect him moving forward? Is he going to be more depleted? Because that choke looked so, so deep. I thought he was going to go out. I think what he's going to have to do, Phil, is be just a little bit more careful. I don't think he quite appreciated the extraordinarily high level of submission skill possessed by Kamil Magomedov. He knows it now. He knows he was literally Brave Nation a split second away from going to sleep. Unfortunately, I think he's going to have to ramp back just a little bit on that relentless attack. Is in mixed martial arts. If your opponent knows what you're going to do, it is a big, big, big demerit against you. Third round of five, and what has been a fantastic main event so far. What has been a fantastic Brave Combat Federation show. Kuban Ichbek puts the pressure on right from the get-go. It also has to be said, we've talked about how much that choke took out of Kuban Ichbek, but how much might it potentially have taken out of the arms of Kamil Magomedov? Brave Nation, there's a psychological effect where if you think you've got your opponent finished, whether it's with a submission or with strikes, you can actually expend so much energy and feel so excited that when that excitement is gone, your body's tired, it can leave you in a genuinely depleted state. Reverse half guard position. Gonna be a here. scramble here. Michael Medoff thinking about a knee bar. Not just oh. thinking about it. 
Oh, that is in place. The hips are too high by, oh, by, they're off, too low, yeah, too high, excuse me. They're just so close. Maybe a transition to a heel hook. Oh, that's getting tighter. The angle's not quite oh, right oh, again. Oh, we're off by a couple of centimeters. Oh, Kuba Nijbeck is one of the toughest men in mixed martial arts. A lesser leg would break right there. Scramble coming, who's gonna end up on top? Michael Mero, uh, triangle attempt. Michael Medov did a great job to defend, and that's twice he has been close with submissions. Another big take down from Kuba Nijbeck. Really good fight so far. Less than halfway through this round, Brave Nation. Kuba Nijbeck landing some big shots. Trying to open up some little pockets of space to advance his position. Has one hook in. And rolls. Body triangle. Very smart work from Kuba Nijbeck. This body triangle, Brave Nation, is tough on the conditioning. It's very hard to breathe in this position, and it's hard to escape from. Magomedov does the right thing by rolling to the side that it's locked on, but then Kuba Nijbeck brings him back to the other side. Denied. Lovely work to lace up the leg as well with his instep. And what a change in tempo this would be if, if Kuban Ichbeck scored the submission. Chokes on the chin right now. Hurts, not typically a fight ender. Nice work from Kuban Ichbeck to reassert the triangle. And once again, credit to... Cranking that face. Oh. Just face squishing. That can't be nice, but credit to the fans here in Serbia. Very well educated on the sport. This is a warrior culture full of amazing people. Amazing kindness, amazing cuisine, amazing hospitality, and amazing fighters. The Serbians, a great bunch of lads. Again, such a back and forth fight. If you are a fan of the purity of mixed martial arts, then you are loving this battle between the interim champion, Kuban Ichbek, and the challenger, Kamil Magomedov. Phil, I believe psychologically, Kuban Ichbek wants to try and sink the same submission. He wants to try and get that rear naked choke just to prove to his opponent, anything you can do, I can do better. Magomedov trying, oh, he's got his finger inside the glove. Deki Larkin spots it. That's why he's one of the best in the business. Brave Nation, you can grab the opponent's gloves, but your fingers cannot loop inside of it. Right in front of us here in our broadcast position, you can see Kuban Ichbek slowly, methodically trying to work, trying to get bicep grip, but being well defended so far. He's never quite underneath the chin, more on the chin. Kuban H. Beck maintaining the dominant position, but Kerrick, you also have to ask the question of how much does holding that body triangle, could that potentially take a little bit out of the legs of Kuban H. Beck? For a normal human being, yes. For <laughs> Omak, no. And Phil, I like Kuban Ichbek 10-9 in that round. Do you agree or do you want to argue? I'd be inclined to agree with you. I wouldn't argue with you because you've probably forgotten more about mixed martial arts than I could ever hope to know. They've been close, close rounds each time. Round one, round two, I put a question mark. There's the first time. Even though it was extremely close, I did not put a question mark down. There was that. That was a close, close knee bar attempt. Here we see the relentlessness of Omak in action. No single thing he does is devastating, but in accumulation, it's devastating. Phil Magomedov looking just a little bit more fatigued in that corner than his opponent. I think being in that back body triangle 
for a good part of the round. Left him feeling a little bit depleted. Kubinich back looks hungry. <laughs> He's good to go, isn't he? Such a tightly contested con uh, such a tightly contested fight we have here. Both fighters have definitely had their moments. He can make compelling arguments for either. Brave Nation, we are now in championship rounds. We are now in deep waters. Doing what you're watching in front of you requires a whole nother level of conditioning. Kubanichbek believes, rightly or wrongly, that his condition is superior. Watch out for the potential for a choke. Nope. Oh, Kubanichbek just effortlessly slips to take the back. Beautiful back take. Well, makes it look effortless. There's a lot of effort going on. Looking for that mat return, hard to get. He is trying to work that left leg in. That was a nice takedown. Not only did it destabilize opponent's balance, but it hurt that calf as well. One hook in, trying to work for that other hook. Playing with the reverse half guard position. Oh, there's- Scramble time. On a great work by Michael Medov to reverse the position. Phenomenal scramble. Brave Nation, close fights are very often won in the scrambles and right there. Kamil Magomedov, he won that scramble. Kubanichbek trying to break the grip right now, doing the right thing. Magomedov doing a good job of attacking the legs when he's there. They may look like little shots, but the accumulation of those on the potentially tired legs of Kubanichbek. Again, reversal of positions here. As we referenced earlier, Brave Nation, fighters fighting up against a fence like this is the purest test of strength. And we're seeing here who the stronger fighter is. Good head fighting here from Kuban Ijbek. Trying to drop the level, may switch to a low angle. Oh, beautiful. Little but scramble then, there, could have been a submission attempt, could be another one. Potential for a nice little up kick there from Magomedov. I believe the knees are were up just slightly as yep. they are now. May try and roll for a leg here. Trying to set up the triangle, Carrick. Triangle potential here, head has to be well controlled first or it'll be passed readily. Smart pass from Kuba on each back. So evenly balanced. Kubanichbek riding a 12 fight on beaten streak, dating all the way back to February 2018. At 28 years old, he's only starting to begin to enter his athletic prime. Kubanichbek now working inside the closed guard of Magomedov. 90 Kubini seconds. Kubinichbek's pace has slowed just slightly here. We'll let him away with it considering it's the fourth round of the lightweight title fight. Brave Nation, toes are not allowed to stick inside the fence. You can place the sole of your foot on the fence, but your toes are not allowed to stick through. Kuban each back right now, just smothering the work of Magomedov. One of the keys to this ground and pound Brave Nation is head positioning. Omaka's keeping his head above his opponent's head. That's stopping a whole lot of techniques coming from bottom. Oh! That one sounded like a cricket bat on a watermelon. Kuban each back is completely unfazed by it. 30 seconds in our penultimate round. It's another good up kick from Magomedov. 
Maybe trying to switch the arm bar, but the arm's safe of Kubanich back. Ground and pound being landed here again. Being definitive in the end of the round, Kubanich back. Magomedov has done a tremendous job of keeping himself relatively safe. Has not taken any big shots. But that approach to mixed martial arts requires your opponent to make a mistake that you take advantage of definitively. That has not happened. Let's, Phil, have a look at this replay that we're seeing courtesy of MTS. Camille Magomedov did a great job to reverse the position, but... Again, it's just, it's such a beautifully technical fight character. You see just how talented both men are, how, in, how high their MMA IQ is. Right now, Kubanichbek is potentially just edging it. That said, the, the flow of play here was such that he cannot assume he's well ahead. He's got to go Correct. out there and fight this round as if winning this round will win the fight for him, because that could be the case. And he's got to dance with a gallop rung to him. He can't switch his game up. He's had very good luck the last two rounds with his usual relentless pace. He's got to keep it up, but he's got to be careful. If he makes a mistake for a split second, he can get tapped out. He can even get knocked out. Potentially, and I'm saying this with my commentary head on, as I'm, I'm not judging the fight professionally here tonight, but Kamil Magomedov may need a finish if he, if he wants to win this fight. It would be wise for his corner to assume that and tell him to go for it. He's got the skills to do it, Phil. He's he got an amazing background in Taekwondo, can throw kicks out of nowhere. His strikes are great, wrestling's great, and of course his submissions are supreme. This is what he does not want Kuban Ichbek to do. Good separation from Magomedov. Beautiful reversal. There may be, there may be a little, have it been an eye poke? I think he might have slept on some moisture. I'm not quite sure what the protestation was there from Camille Magomedov. Was not clear from our table. Deck Larkin told him to fight on, and they are fighting on. Big takedown from Kuban each back. You'd said, Phil, that being pushed up against a cage is not where he wants to be. Being pushed up against a cage when he's in bottom guard is even more so. Not where he wants to be. He wants to be looking for a stand up here. Credit to Magomedov. He's trying to make something happen to create the angle for himself. May, tr may try and work the arm bar here. I was getting close to an arm bar. But again, Kuban each bait just does not give his opponents any kind of space with which to work. Suffocating, draining game plan. Head on triangle position, but too close to the cage. Michael Medoff trying to roll, trying to create space, but Kuba Nietzschebeck sticking to him like white on rice. Nice little hammer fist from bottom by Camille Magomedov. As I said, he's keeping himself relatively safe, using brilliant jujitsu, throwing a lot of shots from bottom, having luck with some of them. At the beginning of an armbar there, potentially. Midway point of the fifth and final round. Trying to dive on that Kimura grip. Kimura can use be used to, it can be used as a sweep, can be used as a submission, can be used to stand up. Kuba needs back staying active, landing shots. You wonder at this stage of a fight just how much. Love Magomedov attacking from bottom. Actually giving better than he gets. Decky Larkin said avoid the spine. Brave Nation, imagine a cell phone. You run it all the way down the center of the back. That area cannot be hit.
Shamil Magomedov wants to take that arm off, take it home with him. Was not successful thus far. Has had some great work with that up kick. It really is do or die now for Camille Magomedov. Needs to do something definitive, and by definitive, I mean fight ending. He had his moments, but f realistically for me, Kirik, the turning point in the fight was the rear naked choke attempt from Camille Magomedov. As you say, sometimes psychologically when you feel you're that close to a finish, it's hard to, to refocus and get yourself back into that mind frame. It happens with striking when you're ground and pounding a fighter and you think you finished him and you don't. It's very, very tough to bounce back from psychologically. That's even more true when you get a submission, even more true when that submission appeared to me to be completely sunk. Final 30 seconds in the championship boat. Kuba and each back on top. Kudos, Phil, to both these fighters for the conditioning they're showing. They're still aggressively in here. Ten seconds now, Brave Nation. Has Abdi Salam Ulu Kuban Ichbek broken the lightweight curse? There's only one way to find out. Kirik, sum up that incredible fight between two absolute warriors. In one word, Phil, wow. <laughs> Those two warriors wowed me. We're now getting a replay courtesy of MTS. Once those hands, Brave Nation, are gripped together at the top of the hamstrings, a uh, takedown is almost sure to follow. And when you've got Kubanich back on top of you, a ground and pound is sure to follow. But Camille Magomedov throwing, I think he was throwing nastier knees from bottom than the punches he was receiving from top. What a way to end, not just Brave Combat Federation 69 from Belgrade, Serbia, but to end International Combat Week. Again, shout out to Serbian MMA Federation President Luka Nikolic. He did guarantee us that this would be a special event and he delivered. Shout out to Luka Nikolic, shout out to all the people in Serbia. I want to speak directly to all the people in Serbia watching on television. You are amazing. Your hospitality, your toughness, your kindness. You are a wonderful, wonderful nation and we are honored. We are beyond honored to be here. Phil, there's a couple of things in mixed martial arts. One of them, never leave it in the hands of the judges. Another one of them, the Brave Combat Federation lightweight curse. Could those two conspire to twist and turn the scores that are very shortly going to be read out to us? Mohamed Kamber, head of the Bahrain MMA Federation, and Mohamed Shahid, president of Brave Combat Federation, have stepped into the cage. Mohamed Shahid has the belt, the undisputed belt, over his shoulder. We're now awaiting the arrival of the Roaring Lion of Brave, Carlos Kramer. I can see him, he's in sight cage side, conferring with the top officials, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. As soon as the judges scorecards are tallied and reviewed, Carlos Kramer is gonna enter the Brave Combat Federation cage and let us all know who is the Brave Combat Federation undisputed lightweight champion of the world. Apologies for that brief wait, brief wait, Brave Nation. But we got a lion stalking into the cage.
Carlos Kramer. Make it official for us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what a fight for our main event of the evening. After five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 49-46. Your next judge scores about 49-46. And your third judge scores about 48-47. For your winner, by unanimous decision, and still, the undisputed Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Abdi Salam Omuk Ulu. 